I have placed watchmen on thy walls, O Jerusalem, who shall not rest all the day nor all the night. Since the beginning of recorded history, Jerusalem has been a walled city. The destruction and rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem down through the centuries is related in the Bible. From time to time, the position of the walls and its gates changed. The present walls, which are about two and a half miles long, were rebuilt in the 16th century by the Turkish Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent. For many centuries, it was a custom amongst the Jews to walk around the walls during certain festivals and fast days. According to tradition, the great Hebrew poet Yehuda Halevi was murdered in 1140 whilst circling the walls. In our own times, this ancient custom of walking around the walls of Jerusalem has been revived. Seven gates open through the walls of Jerusalem. In the southern wall is the Zion Gate. The Crusaders in the 12th century called it the Gate of Mount Zion because of its proximity to Mount Zion with the traditional tomb of King David. This also led the Arabs to call it the Gate of the Prophet David. It was David who, 3,000 years ago, found the underground passage into the Jebusite fortress city of Jerusalem whose mighty walls were believed to be impregnable. From that day on, Jerusalem has been known as the city of David. During the Middle Ages, Zion Gate was called the Jewish Quarter Gate because it led onto a section of Jerusalem populated by Jews since before the days of the Crusaders. In 1948, the Jewish Quarter was laid under siege by the Arab Legion. The Israeli army fought their way through Zion Gate in an unsuccessful attempt to lift the siege. The Zion Gate was walled up by the Arab Legion and the Jewish Quarter and its ancient synagogues systematically destroyed. reunited in 1967, the Zion Gate was reopened and the Arab Legion fortifications removed to allow access once more to the parapet of the walls in this area. The ruined Jewish quarter is now being rebuilt and its venerable synagogues restored. Around the southwestern corner of the wall and a bit further along the western wall is an ancient fortress parts of which were built by Herod the Great nearly 2,000 years ago. Its capture by the Roman legions of Titus in 70 CE marked the fall of Jerusalem. Suleiman the Magnificent reconstructed the walls and added new buildings to the tower, which appears as the symbol of Jerusalem on Crusader coins and maps of the 12th century. In modern times, the Turks and the British used part of the tower as the infamous Kishele Jail, and the Jordanians used it as an army garrison. It is believed to be the site of a tower mentioned in Solomon's Song of Songs. Thy neck is like the Tower of David, built for an armory on which hang a thousand shields, all shields of mighty heroes. Close by the Tower of David is Jaffa Gate, named for the ancient Mediterranean port city. The main road from Jerusalem to Jaffa starts here. Because of another important road which leads from here to Hebron and the tomb of the patriarch Abraham, the Arabs refer to it as the Hebron Gate. An Arabic inscription reads, There is no God but Allah, and Abraham is the beloved of God. Another inscription dates the present gate to 1538, 
and cites an order by Suleiman the Great to build it. In 1898, the moat between Jaffa Gate and David's Tower was partially filled in. A breach in the wall was made to allow Kaiser Wilhelm and his entourage to enter the city. In 1918, General Allenby, the British victor over the Turks, made his triumphal entry through this same opening. In 1889, the new gate was opened in the northwest corner of the walls. Also called the Sultan's Gate or Abdul Hamid's Gate, it shortened the distance between the Holy Sepulchre and the Christian quarter to the monasteries and churches outside the walls. Beyond the new gate in the northern wall is the Damascus Gate, the most beautiful and important of all Jerusalem's gates. The market just inside the gate is the center of the commercial life of the old city of Jerusalem. In Hebrew, this gate is still known as the Shechem Gate, after the road which leads from here to biblical Shechem. In the fourth century, the Byzantines called Shechem by a Greek name, Neopolis, the new city. This was corrupted over the centuries to its present name in Arabic, Nablus. The gate is called Nablus Gate by the Arabs, but it is more commonly known as Babel Amud, the gate of the pillar referring to a stone pillar which once stood here and from which distances to other places were measured. The early Christians called it Damascus Gate, but the Crusaders also called it St. Stephen's Gate, after a church by that name which once stood nearby on the site of the present Dominican monastery. Under the present gate are many relics of previous eras including a stone inscribed in Latin with the words Colonia Aelia Capitolina, the Roman name for Jerusalem. Under the base of the walls beyond the Damascus Gate, a large cave leads back through the bedrock. It is known as the Cave of Hezekiah, after the biblical king of Judah, who took refuge here according to tradition. Damascus Gate is also known as the Gate of the Cave. Further along the northern wall is Herod's Gate, named for the road which leads from here to the Herod family tomb. In the Middle Ages, it was called the Gate of Those Who Never Sleep, after a nearby Muslim cemetery. But the Arabs today refer to it as the Flower Gate, after the carvings in the stone. At the northeast corner of the wall, near Herod's Gate, the weekly animal market takes place much as it has for centuries gone by. nearby villages and desert encampments, farmers and Bedouin shepherds barter and bargain in traditional styles. According to the Muslim Quran, this area near Herod's Gate will be the place of judgment and resurrection at the end of days. The only open gate in the eastern wall is St. Stephen's Gate, named for the Christian martyr who, according to tradition, was taken through this gate to nearby Kidron Valley where he was stoned. It is also known as the Lion's Gate, after the pairs of lions, the insignia of the Berbers, which are carved on each side of the entrance. The Crusaders knew it as Jehoshaphat Gate, since it leads to the Valley of Jehoshaphat. And it is by that name that the traveler, Benjamin of Toledo, refers to it in 1173. The Arabs also call it the Gate of Lady Mary, whose birthplace is at the site of nearby St. Anne's Church, named in honor of the Virgin's mother. A map of the Crusader period also shows it as the Mount of Olives Gate. In the Middle Ages, the Arabs called it the Jericho Gate, since the road to that city leaves from here, but earlier they had named it the Tribes Gate in honor of the Twelve Tribes of Israel. 
The gate is the start of the Via Dolorosa, which wends its way from here to the Holy Sepulchre. During the Six-Day War of June 1967, Israeli paratroopers breached the walls of this gate and recaptured the old city from the Jordan Arab Legion after bitter fighting. Beyond St. Stephen's Gate in the Eastern Wall are a pair of walled-up openings known as the Gates of Mercy or the Golden Gates. According to tradition, Jesus entered Jerusalem through these gates and legend says they will not be opened again until the coming of the Messiah. This corner of the walls is built on the foundations of a fortress dating to the time of the temple. The protruding pillar is called Muhammad's pillar, where the prophet will sit on judgment day. The magnificent Mosque of Omar stands on the site of the first and second temples. At this point, the walls overlook the slopes of the Mount of Olives. Here stands Absalom's memorial, raised by David's son as a symbol of revolt. Also prominent in the valley are the tomb of King Hezekiah, and the family tomb of a priestly family called the children of Hezir. On the slopes of the Mount of Olives itself are the Garden of Gethsemane and the picturesque Russian Orthodox Church. Most of the slope is taken by Jewish burial grounds where for centuries Jews were interred within sight of the temple area and close by the site of the Last Judgment. South of the city wall, across the Kidron Valley, lies the village of Silwan, the biblical Shiloh. Mosque of Al-Aqsa is built into the southern city wall opposite this point. A bit further along the wall are the triple gates closed for centuries past. Opposite Silwan is the Dung Gate. The name is first mentioned in the Bible's description of Nehemiah's tour of the walls in 445 BCE. The Arabs call it the Gate of the Westerners whilst in the Middle Ages it was known as the Shiloh Gate. The Crusaders, in the time of the 12th century Latin Kingdom of Jerusalem, called it the Postern of the Tanners. Among the remnants of ancient architecture, this section of the wall is Robinson's Arch, named for the English archaeologist who found it. It is part of a bridge which once connected the upper city across the valley of the cheesemakers to the second temple area. For nearly 2,000 years, the focus of prayer for Jews all over the world has been the part of the western outer wall of the temple compound left standing from the time of the Roman destruction. Generations of pilgrims and worshippers have placed petitions for divine intercedence between the cracks of its venerable stones. The huge ashlars have been silent witnesses to the tearful prayers mourning the loss of the temple and Jewish sovereignty, so that it became known as the Wailing Wall. Today, with the restoration of the Jewish nation to its ancient homeland, the wall yet remains the holiest shrine of the Jewish religion and a focal point for prayer and festivals. According to an ancient tradition, at the end of days, Jerusalem will be surrounded by seven walls. A wall of gold, a wall of silver, one of ruby, one of emerald, a wall of pearl, a wall of jasper, and a wall of fire. Each of the precious elements symbolizing the divine attributes of purity and beauty bestowed on the eternal holy city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem.